How about talking about how fluids move now? Most of everything we talked about so far in this chapter have been just static fluids. They're not moving at all. So in this section, we will talk about the volume flow rate, the equation of continuity, and in the following section, we'll talk about Bernoulli's law. There are two types of flow. We will concern ourselves here with what's called steady flow. In steady flow, if you look at one particular spot, think of a river moving downstream, and you, you look at one spot in the, in the river, above a stone in the bottom, for example, the velocity is always the same at that particular point in the river. Unsteady flow is like turbulence, where things are moving around and the, and the velocity at one particular point varies with time. So like I said, with turbulent flow, boy, if you, if you pick a spot below you know, some rock in the river, just two, in, two centimeters above that rock, I mean, the flow might be this way at one moment and that way at another moment. That's an extremely unsteady flow. So, but in steady flow, so uh, turbulence is a subject for another day. It's a fascinating nonlinear subject. It's, um, it and, and nonlinear fluids are uh, part of the world that I've spent a large portion of my life trying to study and understand. Um, but it's beyond the level of, of what we want to try to accomplish in this, in this class. When the flow is steady, streamlines are used to represent the trajectories of the fluid particles. So now, instead of thinking about sitting in a particular spot in the fluid and watching the, the fluid flow past you, now we're going to put a, a leaf or something in the flow and follow that leaf uh, as it moves through the fluid. And that motion of a particular leaf or some kind of tracer particle is called, uh, it moves along what's known as a streamline. So you can make uh, streamlines with, with dye. So you're releasing dye, and, and then as the water flows past this, um, th these glass tubes, then it carries the, the fluid along and to measure streamlines. Or you can do it in an, in an air chamber So volume flow rate for steady flows. The volume of a fluid that passes through a tube per second is called the volume flow rate. So it's the volume flow rate. It's a volume divided by a time. It's the volume of the fluid measured in cubic meters divided by the time. And it is equal to the area, the cross-sectional area. So this would be the cross-sectional area of the tube times the velocity. And you can see that the units work out. Area is measured in meters squared. Velocity is measured in meter per second. So meter squared times meter per second is meters cubed per second. So the units all work out. And the, the actual derivation is not that hard. Your book has a nice discussion about it, as I remember. Um, but this turns out to be the volume per unit time. A is the cross-sectional area, and, and B is the fluid velocity. Equation of continuity. So again, remembering that A times V is called the volume flow rate. We use the um, symbol capital Q to denote the volume flow rate. The equation of continuity says the following. For steady, incompressible flow, so we've already introduced the idea of steady. That means that at a particular point in the fluid, as water rushes past it, the, the velocity doesn't change with time. That's steady flow. In compressible flow, it means that you can't compress the fluid. 
So for, most in, uh, for almost all intents and purposes, water flows are almost always incompressible. As opposed to air flow, air can be compressed quite easily, and a lot of times those are incompressible. But for steady, I'm sorry, for air, the flow is compressible, because you can compress air. But for water, it's generally incompressible. So for those, for those caveats, the volume flow rate has the same value at every position along a tube. So we're going to do a demonstration in just a second here. But the, um, if, if a tube narrows down, so this looks like a, a, a Coke bottle, the, and the velocity is, is a particular velocity here with a cross-sectional area there, and you move to an area that is smaller, cross-sectional area, then the velocity has to be higher in such a way that the volume flow rate, Q, is maintained to be a constant. So that just says that area times the volume over, or times the velocity here, well, actually it's here, area times the velocity equals the area times the velocity over here. If it were not so, then um, you'd be losing fluid somewhere. The volume, if you've got three cubic meters moving down um, a river at one point, you better have three cubic meters moving down the river at a later point. Otherwise, if it's less than that, that means you lost some water somewhere. If it's greater than that, that means you've, you've got some water that's being added. So this is just basically a statement of conservation of, um, of mass, conservation of, of uh, volumes of water which we said right here. All right. Uh, an example, garden hose. You've all taken a garden hose and put your thumb over it, try to get a higher velocity. This is that problem. Garden hose is an opening of the cross-sectional area of 2.85 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Fills a bucket with a volume of 8 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters in 30 seconds. Find the speed of the water that leaves the hose through the unobstructed opening and an, un and an obstructed opening with half as much area, like this case here, where you put your thumb over the opening. So first of all, the volume flow rate is cross-sectional area times velocity. If we want to find the velocity, then we can divide both sides by the area. The volume flow rate is 8 times 10 to the minus 3. Right there. Divided by 30 seconds. So this is a manifestation of the idea that the volume flow rate, so this Q is a volume divided by a time, like we talked about in the last slide. So there's the volume, and there's the time, and the, the ratio of those two gives the volume flow rate. Divided by the cross-sectional area, and that gives a velocity of 0.936 meters per second. But suppose then we constrict it down, and we want to, we call this V1, and we want to restrict it down to uh, a smaller cross-sectional area. The volume, so this would be the volume, uh, or this, the speed here, V1, with cross-sectional area A1. But then here, we have V2, which we're going to expect to be larger because the area is half A2 is half of A1. So let's see if we actually do get a higher velocity here. The volume flow rate has to be conserved. That conserves mass. And we can solve for V2 by dividing both sides by A2. The A2's cancel on the right side, and V2 is A1 over A2 times V1. And A1 a2 is one half A1. 
So V2 is A1 over A2 times B1. Well, A2 is 1 half A1. That means that A1 is twice A2. So that's twice A2 over A2 times V1. So lo and behold, the A2s cancel, and we just get twice V1. So whatever V1 was, we just have to multiply it by 2 um, to get the velocity out here. So you can double the velocity if you, if you uh, pinch off half of the end of the opening.